Oh, well, hi guys. So, just thinking. Um, that happens occasionally. And it's all about the AI trend at the minute. Obviously we know it's only going to get more and more and more and more. Um, and, you know, when the big companies get hold of it, like Apple and places like, places like that, uh, they are going to have some serious tech throwing out um, AI images and videos and things like that. And, you know, that's going to hit hard on massive industries of photography, videography, and things like that. So, you know, it's going to change the way that a lot of people uh, basically um, do what they do. Um, portrait photographers for fashion and stuff like that, out of a job. The school photos, out of a job. The wedding photographer. Don't really know about that one because like a lot of things, like personal photo shoots. So I did a bump shoot this morning with Charlotte and I'll put a couple of pictures in. Uh, and a bit of video as well. And a drone video. And that's a unique experience. And I think that's where, you know, people need to sort of think, right, I need to give an experience and actually have a really sociable um, photo shoot. And that is what makes it real, you know, keeping it realistic uh, as much as possible will, um, you know, give you the edge. Because at the end of the day, you're not uh, basically being the same as everyone else. Hello, Tommy. Come here. There you got Tommy, he's coming to say hello. Uh, yeah, so I think with what we've got going on with all the AI technology and stuff like that, it's, it's a huge change, you know, for a lot of things. You know, it's so easy now just to type in a few letters, a few a few words, and, and create something in Photoshop, for example. The, oh, there you go. Um, come on. There you go. Uh, Hello. Um, yeah, I mean, you can type in stuff and it's, and it's a really good tool actually, you know, and, and for me as a photographer, if you photograph something like this field and I didn't have any hay bales, these are real by the way, um, and the cat is real as well, this is Tommy. Um, you know, if we didn't have the AI editing, uh, you know, it, it does make it a little bit harder because you've then got to go and find an image or go and take an image and then um, bring it into the image on Photoshop and actually add it in. But, um, there's a plane doing circles and acrobatics right above us, typical. Um, yeah, so it, it's, I just wanted a quiet five minutes and I've got a plane buzzing around doing circles and loop the loops. Don't know if you can, well, I presume you can hear that. Uh, um, but yeah, back to the AI thing, it's, you know, I used it for, uh, I did a photo shoot and uh, there was a, an old dew pond and I'll put the picture in, or the before and after pictures. The, the dew pond um, was empty, it leaks. It, it's an old concrete basin basically and it used to fill up with water uh, from rain and dew and, and things like that. Uh, and it basically, now, it's probably, I don't know how many years it's been there, but basically it just leaks. So it never has any water in it but it was quite a nice rustic looking environment. So for the photos we, we took, so in the AI area of the generation, the generate um, button on uh, Photoshop, I was able to type in uh, pond, water, rocks and things like that. And it, all, and it generated something and put it in there for you. And it gave me three options. I even put the reflection of the model in, in shots, which I thought was, okay, that's really good. Uh, and if you hadn't known I'd done it and I'd not mentioned it, you wouldn't really know. Um, is that good? Uh, so in that respect, I think it's actually a good thing because it allows us to still be creative, but utilizing one of our own images. So we're still being realistic in, in, in terms of um, the actual image was taken by me or you or whatever. Uh, and yeah, we, we've edited it, but it's taken away the hard work of actually messing around, putting in the images individually or going out and taking a picture of a hay bale, for example, and putting it in on the edge of the field. Uh, and stuff like that. So I think that's a huge, huge market, obviously, for keeping it real.
What are you doing down there, Tommy? And it's it's definitely something that you know you've got to stay ahead of the game with it. And it's you know um, it's a scary a scary moment really because you know do we need all this kit anymore? You know, or can we just type it in and and we get in you know images that are produced? But I've found with the AI images that are being produced, they all look roughly the same. They all have this feel about them that doesn't look real, even though they look very realistic. Um, but they just lose that thing, you know. Going down, we went down into the meadow this morning with Charlotte, and I'll, like I said, I'll put some pictures up. We went down into this meadow, um, and she walked down. She got, you know, she's pregnant. She's got a bump, and we. Um, Basically, did some shots down there. There's a pheasant literally in the grass over there, jumping around. Lovely, absolutely beautiful. There was butterflies, as you can, I don't know if you can see them in shot. I don't know if there's any flying around in the grass down here, but there's thousands of butterflies in this meadow. I'm talking thousands. And they were flying up into the video and everything like that, and a few in the pictures as well. You know, yes, I could generate some of them and probably put them in, um, but I don't want to. I want to keep it as realistic as possible. So the photos you've seen, the only modification to the images that I've done today and it was really she was actually really impressed she said you haven't edited them i said no i haven't edited them uh so zero editing other than a little tweak on the levels so a bit of um whites or highlights or the shadow and a conversion to black and white that's it so no um airbrushing for skin or body shaping or adding in anything or anything like that they're completely and utterly um you know unedited as such you know i've kept them as as realistic as I possibly could, you know, and I think that's a really good thing because you, all you see on Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok and all that sort of is fake, 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 fake. And I think, you know, being real, being as realistic as possible is, is a good thing, you know. Um, plus also, you know, it's a, it's a passion of ours. You know, we love to get out with the cameras. You know, it doesn't matter what area of photography you like, you know, are you, portrait photographer or your wildlife i mean I, i'm a lot of people will know that i do a lot of everything I, I i don't really like doing just one thing i like to do the wildlife portraiture um macro landscapes low light stuff like astro and things like that you know i'm not brilliant at everything but you know i like to dabble in in a lot of the areas and it, and it just keeps me happy you know and i think that's one of the best things about photography is you can be creative in many ways you know um but it was just my thoughts you know i think you know it's going to change a lot of ways which we understand that you know but that's like when it went from film to digital it changed hugely the way that we could do things you know we didn't have to um hope for the best a lot of the time and hope we got that shot you know or do test shots with the um polaroid backs you know um you know so there's a lot of messing around you know in those days uh, and that was still i mean 2004 we were still shooting hasselblad film with um polaroid back you know you take the polaroid, you take the film back off and put polaroid back on it take your test shot have a look at it make sure it's okay and then retake it and you know that even back in 2004 that was still a thing you know to get the best quality uh, and obviously now digital with something like the a1 or nikon z9 or the canon r3 is it um you know those sort of level cameras the qualities are incredible even with all the entry level cameras and all the other cameras out there that you know people are using it the, the quality is awesome uh you know it's a replication from a digital signal into uh, an image onto your computer which in respects isn't quite as realistic as film i guess because that's a bit more organic um but it's the most efficient way of doing it and I think that's fine. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with digital at all. Uh, it's much more cost effective. Uh, the quality is just incredible now in, in pretty much all, all cameras. Uh, and the way the autofocus and everything like that has changed over the years and it's allowed us to do things very easily and quickly. I mean, we did a shoot down there today, um, not quickly, but I think we were less than an hour and we got some really cool shots. So, you know, and I've not even edited it. I've just processed a few shots uh so less than two hours work and we've got a really lovely photo shoot with a video and everything as well so you know you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours editing if you can get it in camera 
correct as much as you possibly can you know a couple of little tweaks of levels and everything you know if needed but a lot of the time i didn't even change them i just literally converted to black and white and uh save them as a a separate file so you know there's, there's so much involved you know having you know i did a dance shoot uh, from a friend of mine, MK Studio, she's uh, Kimberly. She she's a dance teacher, absolutely amazing, and I photographed her lots and lots of times over the years. Uh, and she did a big show last was it last Saturday, uh, and I was there shooting shooting it. And uh, the students were amazing, but the capturing certain things in the show, like a, one of the dancers jumping up doing a flip, or you know leaping, or doing splits, or you know two of them together spinning and holding each other up and you know um, and things like that it, it is very unique you know and can AI do that but at the end of the day it's also a memory so you can have AI generate stuff yeah fine if you really want to go that way but at the same time it's not real you know so the fact that me and Charlotte went down the field today and we did did a photo shoot down there that's a nice memory for her she you know she'll remember those photos um being taken and also it'll be a certain part of her life that's been sort of you know um ticked off as a, as a nice little remembrance of before she had a baby you know so there's lots and lots involved with photography as being a memory and yeah obviously if you're photographing a product it's not going to make a huge difference but you know if it's something personal like a wedding or baby shower, um, pregnancy shoot, uh, modelling shoot, you know, um, for building up confidence. You know, real world confidence building, you know, is done with photo shoots. Photo shoots, um, if you've got a good photographer who can connect with the model, you know, make them laugh, make them bring out their real, you know, personality and everything like that, it, it can change a person. And... I've, I've had people actually give me a massive hug and say thank you to me um, and because I've actually managed to change how they were you know they'd been um, in a bad relationship or whatever and they, they'd been pushed down and down and down uh, and the fact that I've been able to give them the confidence back again to get one and get in front of the camera and they really enjoyed it but also made them feel like alive again you know and I think that's a huge thing as well uh, and that's just one small portion of the real world photography rather than AI and the list goes on and on and on um, commercially maybe yeah but I think in the real world of photography as a passion and also uh, helping people and giving people a real good experience I think it, you can't beat the real world stuff you know and I think that's the way forward so anyway that was just my five 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 ten minutes probably uh, of um, my thoughts of it on the AI stuff. Yes, I use it, I'm not gonna deny it at all. Um, but only really for certain things, you know, if I haven't got something in the shot and I haven't got the time or the possibility of getting something in shot, like putting these in with a tractor, uh, you know, you might need to actually, you know, add a little bit of extra artwork into the actual image to make it kind of work a little bit better. You know, I had the tractor part here the other night and I'll put the shots in and I basically lit certain areas of the camera and I actually layered, I think it was 10 or 12 pictures in the end, uh, with different areas of lighting in the dark with the stars and everything uh, to create an image. And obviously to the naked eye in the dark, it was dark, but I've added lighting in and I've created an image that I quite like. It's for the guy who owns the tractor. I just thought it'd be, it'd be quite fun to do. And, you know, hopefully he really likes the shot, you know, that's what it was about. So, you know, could I, could you replicate his exact tractor that he loves in AI? No, you can't. Aha, it's a gardening man. Um, anyway, that's, that's it for now. Um, don't forget to click the subscribe button, little notification bell as well. Let me know what you think uh, about this. You know, what's your thoughts on the AI thing? And could you add to anything that I've maybe missed? Let me know. I'll see you soon. Um, Tommy says, hello. Didn't you? You enjoying life down there? Catch you later, guys.